the Forty Auti podcast. As an autistic person, sort of being so different, it's we carry we carry with us a lot of negative experiences with life that definitely do affect our perception of other people, but also of ourselves that we kind of hold on to in the back of our heads that can often be really damaging. I guess you know it's it's one of the things that I tell a lot of people when they first get diagnosed is. You know, it's not necessarily like unmasking or um, learning how to stim or understanding your sensory things, but like actually kind of going through these 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 thoughts that you have of yourself and trying to find where the root of it is. And quite often, it's it's the root of it. It's not necessarily to do with who you are or your personality, but as you do to miscommunication or the environment that you're in, or you know, and and so it can even if you do you have done bad things sort of to people or said said bad things to people it's you know looking at looking at it for it for a different lens for for what it is it, it really does help you process things even even if it is something that you you know i really clicked on with. something you said there on the saying or doing things doing saying or doing bad things to people hmm. like that really clicked in my head a lot because um like i'm stimming like crazy at this whole time but uh <laughs> you know because like to people out there and like with me too you know um you know growing up i i was diff i was a difficult kid you know i have have you know what it, level two autism very bad adhd um and you know i had a lot of outbursts and meltdowns and you know i was very <laughs> difficult and you know, I would get violent. I don't anymore, you know, cause I'm older and I know a lot more, but, um, you know, I would get violent. I, I had no control over it, you know, and mm -hmm. I want to bring that up cause I want people to not feel bad because yeah. it's, you, you can't help it at, at some point, at some point, you know, everyone who has autism, it's, you know, it is a disability for a reason because, you become disabled sometimes where you're unable to act and behave the way that you want to. And mm -hmm. no matter how much inside you're like, no, no, no. And you know, what's actually happening and what you're doing does not match with what you're telling yourself, you know, not don't feel bad. You can't help it. And it's okay. And anyone that makes you feel bad about it, you know, isn't really that good of a person. It's kind of like, especially like in school, it's very much a, like a defensive thing because the environment's so complex and everyone's kind of like moving, f everyone that's, that's your age is kind of moving forward socially. It's at, at a speed that you're not able to keep up with. And so you get into a lot of situations where you, you know, are taking advantage of, um, for, for those differences, you know, you can think of like direct communication and you know, picking up mm -hmm. on nonverbal cues. It's like, um, I think f for me, it was very much that my defense mechanism was to kind of go inside myself and not like react or not, not do anything like that. Like I remember a certain situation at school where there was like someone who, I don't know, for some reason they like punched me in the balls and, um, that's the, best. I just, <laughs> <laughs> and I just didn't react. And I, I just like, I, I, I like stone faced them. And usually that would have worked to some degree. Um, but it didn't because their friends came and they were like, Hey, look, Tom, Tom can get punched in the balls and he can be okay. And and so of course they all gathered around all me and did, started yeah. punching me in the boards. Oh the gosh. Board. Um, so, so it wasn't necessarily the best. In every if I was there, place. man, I'd have taken them down for you. <laughs> that was part of what I did when I was in school too. You know, I like, I would, you know, that was always my thing. You know, I'd always mm. get in the way of those things because it's not okay. And, um, I've just always been able to kind of handle those things and I've wanted to, you know, not to mm. be the violent person, but to, you know, stand up for you, you know, like people like you, like, and, and me, cause that's, you know, like you're me. I just, for some reason have this, you know, fight in me since the day I was born and, mm. you know, I've got to do something with it. So I would do, you know, good things. I would, you know, 
beat people up for you because that would not be okay. <laughs> not if not if I was there. Well, I, <laughs> and then we'd I sit did, at the same I, lunch table. <laughs> I did get to a point where I was kind of feeling like confident. Like I, 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 I very much felt like a ton of anger, even though I was so sort of the right word, placid, not uh, non-confrontational at school. Um, I very mm -hmm. much like held on to a lot of anger. So most of my nights that I spent at school, I would go to the gym on my own. I had like this, this scholarship because of doing my Taekwondo and I would like work out in the morning and, and the night. And I would literally like rid myself of all this energy. Um, I never actually got into any confrontations at school, like that I like fully, fully went into, but I did have some situations where I'd talk to people who were like picking on my friends yeah it's, it's usually other people it's not me not me i'm like <laughs> i just yeah and there, there was like these these two bullies that used to come like and steal our football and kick it over the roof and like twang our ears with like elastic bands and Bully one of them stuff. was like a re yeah <laughs> one of them was like a really big guy and um he was absolutely ginormous um you know Bear in mind that I was like the age of 15, 16. He was, he, he looked like, he was like built like a fully grown man who did strong man. Um, mm. But I, I went up to him one time and I was like, can you stop doing that? And he was like looking at me like, like, cause no, nobody ever like said that to him before that you could, you know, it was like, he's tried to do it again. I was like, no, please don't. It's not comfortable. Um, and I was talking to him and I was like, do you not have anything better to do than come and like harass us at lunchtime? Like, I'm not saying it in a aggressive way or like a, you know, you're just way, having but... a conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so that, that, that was kind of like the first time that I'd really, I guess, con confronted someone verbally it's, and it's, it's very much something that has come in handy, I guess, in, in adulthood. Like if, if someone's just in a very confrontational, aggressive mood, just for no, for no reason, really, they just don't like the look of me. I just have a chat with them and it usually seems to blow over. Okay. <laughs> I think no, knowing good. how to do martial arts helps as well, because you just don't like feel a sense of danger, I guess, around most people.